And good afternoon, everybody. Hello and welcome. Is my microphone on? My microphone's on. Yes. So, yes. Good afternoon. My name's Paul Grogan. Today, I am joined by Eric, who you can see in the top right corner, who I was going to make him visible and then introduce him later on, but he's already there. Um, we're going to be playing Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Born. Now, regular viewers of mine will know that I have mentioned Ashes a few times on my video log and various Q&As, uh, and I have said it is my favourite uh, two-player wizards dueling type of game. And it is one of those games which I would love to play more of because I absolutely love it and I don't get to play it as much as I want to, like many games. Um, this afternoon we're going to be doing a live tutorial and playthrough of it because Eric asked me a long time ago that he wanted me to teach him how to play. And this weekend we were both supposed to be at a certain place in America and that didn't happen. So instead of that, because we might have actually done this in person this weekend over there in America. Uh, we're going to be doing it over the internet. So hello, Eric. Thank you for joining me. Hello. Thank you for having me. Going to give a quick introduction to yourself? Sure. I'm uh, Eric Buscemi. I, uh, I create uh, written content as the Cardboard Horde, and I am one of the co-founders of Punchboard Media, an organization of which uh, Paul is also a member. I am. Yes. Um, yeah, so car Cardboard Horde is written reviews, but you, you're kind of, you, you brought everybody together for Punchboard Media, which is a collection of content creators, for those people who don't mind yep. the word content yeah, creators. Yeah, <laughs> video, podcast, um, written, photographers, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So, Ashes, you have a physical copy of this game, but you've never played it, is that right? I, I do. I, um... I was actually given a cop. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I love two-player dueling games, and I have a bunch of them, but I, I rarely get to play them. Like you were saying, you rarely get to play Ashes. Yeah. So I have all the cards for Summoner Wars, you know, and and so many others, and 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 so I never bought Ashes because I I was like, you know what, I'm not going to spend money on another one of these that I'm yeah. that I'm just going to be sad sad I never get to play. Yeah. But then someone went and bought it for me for Christmas. There we go. Because they're like, oh, I, this is a great dueling game. I can't believe you didn't have it in your collection. I'm like, well, you got me. Yeah, you got me there. So, so here we are. Now, I, now I'm breaking it out of the shrink. You are. Now, Matt is saying in the chat that the voice and the video are out of sync. Uh, is that just Matt, or is that everybody? Because I've not had that problem for a long time, actually. Um, so, yeah, let let me know if anybody else is having the same issue. I can terminate the stream and come back to it if I want to. Um, but we'll carry on going for now. So yeah, a quick introduction about this game because obviously with the success of Magic the Gathering, a lot of people compare Ashes to Magic the Gathering. And let me just get a couple of things clear. This is not a collectible card game, for one. Okay, so you don't buy random booster packs. Uh, and although there are a lot of expansion packs available for this game, I started out with just the Corset and I played the Corset for months and months and months and really enjoyed it. Okay, so you do not need to keep buying all of the other expansion sets in order to keep up. You don't need to do that at all. You can just buy the core set and play with that. The other thing is that the game comes with six pre-constructed decks that are really good decks and they're really good to play against them. That's what I've done. I have never built my own deck for Ashes. Every single time I have played this game, it has just been using one of the pre-constructed decks. So if you're worried about getting into a game where you're gonna to have to buy lots of packs and then do lots of deck construction, you don't need to. You can if you want to play and obviously if you decide to play at competitive level, but for just home play, friendly play, you can play with the pre-constructed decks. Right, apparently there is a sync issue, so bear with us a minute. I am just going to terminate the stream and then restart it again. It won't... Right, back live again. So yeah, we're back live. Uh -huh. Let me know if it is all working fine now. Let me know if the audio and the video are synced up. Uh, hopefully that's fixed it, but all I did was just exit the software and, and go back in. Um, so yeah, so we were talking about Ashes and we're going to be playing today uh, two of the pre-constructed decks that come with the game. Uh, so Eric, you are going to be playing Cole Rorquin and I am going to be playing Aradel Summerguard. Looks good, apparently. And what this video is, this is, this video is not intended if you are a fan of Ashes. If you are, hello, thank you for joining in. But this video is really intended as a, as a beginner's guide, getting started to give you an idea of what the game is. Or if you're like Eric and you've got the game at home and you've never played it, this will get you started. Okay, so the object of this game is, uh, I mean, it is from, it, you can play it with more than two players, but I think like many games like this, it works best with two. Uh, so it's two wizards dueling each other. And the object is to get your opponent down to zero life. So I'm just going to show you uh, your 
I say wizard, they're not called wizard, they're phoenix born. I'm going to show you with my big zoom in cam. Here we go. So this is you. This is Cole Rawquin. Uh, and you can see the big number in the middle, the 15, that is effectively your health. OK, so as I damage you during the game, these damage counters will go on there. Uh, and once you've taken 15, then you're dead and I win. Me, on the other hand, this is me. I've got 16. So I've got I've got 16 life. That is so the you're, objective. you're winning life. already. I am winning already. OK, <laughs> so that that's the main objective of the game. Now, there's two main ways that you will be dealing uh, damage to your opponent. Uh, and the first way is by attacking them with creatures or spells or, or whatever. Uh, and that will be dealing damage to them. But the other way that they will take damage is your deck of cards. OK, once your deck of cards runs out, uh, you don't instantly lose the game, but you start taking damage. So the game might be over before that, we will see. Um, that's basically the objective of the game. The way that you do the setup is that each of the characters will have a deck of black backed cards or black backed bird cards. These are summons, OK? So you'll notice I don't have these in sleeves because these cards are never shuffled. These are creatures that you can summon or conjure and bring into play on the battlefield. And when they die, they just go back into the pile. So they are creatures that are conjured in using spells. Um, but then you have your deck of cards as well. OK, and your deck of cards, I have sleeved it because this does get shuffled. Now, one of the very, very cool things about Ashes, and there's a lot of cool things about Ashes, but one of them is that your hand size is five and you get to choose your starting five cards. OK, now, because these are pre-constructed decks, there are there is a suggested set of five cards for you to get you started. So, Eric, if you can take your deck of white back cards and I'd like you to go through it and take out the following cards and put them in your hand. OK, so you That's have an expand energy, right? There is an expand energy. You have one okay. of those. You have a Summon Iron Rhino. Which happens to be the animal that's on my blackback card, it is, so that yep. makes sense. That is how you summon it. Okay, you have the Hammer Knight. Hammer Knight. Is that, an, the, is that an Anchor Knight? Uh, you've, you've got what you've got. You've got an Anchor Knight as well. And an Iron Worker. And an Iron Worker. And a Hammer Knight. Okay, I got yeah. all of them. Okay, so they are your starting five cards. Now, once you've played the game a few times, you can actually choose your starting five cards yourself as long as every card is different. You can't have more than one of the same card. OK, so they are your five starting cards. I'm going to put them over there off camera. And I okay. should shuffle the rest. And you should shuffle the rest, and that is your deck. All right. So the way this is going to work, because we're playing it over Skype, is Eric is actually going to, he's got his own copy of the deck at home. He's going to be drawing his own cards. Uh, and then he's going to be telling me what he's playing. Right. OK, so let's go through the round sequence. So we have a very, very good reference card. There's a lot of noise coming from your end. Is that you shuffling? Yep, that was ah, that's shuffling. shuffling. Right, that's what it is. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, don't don't tell anyone, but I riffle shuffle. Right. <gasps> and Fucking. I don't sleep my cards either. Oh, yeah. no. OK, so I said this card was two-sided earlier on, and I lied. It's one-sided. There you go. Right, so this is the phases of play. So the basic, the game is going to play over a series of rounds, OK? Uh, each round consists of the following three phases. Let's move that hand, because otherwise it looks weird. I am going to be using my dice tray, Rick, yes. So uh, phase one is always the prepare round, uh, prepare phase. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll all of our dice, uh, and that will set our dice for the round. Any dice that you have left from the previous round that you did not spend, you, you can keep them, OK? So if you roll something really good and decide not to use it, you can keep it from one round to the next. The second step is that you can discard any number of cards from your hand. We're not going to do that in the first round, but just be aware that in future rounds, and this is more once you know your deck, if there are cards you have in your hand that you think, actually, this is not really good right now, because some of the cards in your deck are better suited against some of the other Phoenix Borns, um, you can discard any number of cards from your, from your hand. And the reason why you would want to do that is step three is you draw back up to your hand size. So if you have no cards in hand, you will draw five new cards from your from your deck. Right, that's what happens in phase one. Phase two is the player turns, and this bit goes on for ages. OK, so in the player turns, starting with whoever is the start player that we'll determine in a minute, uh, you get to take one main action and you must take one main action. And then you may take one side action and you can do them in any order. 
So there's okay. a lot, while it's, whilst it might appear very simple, must do a main action, may do a side action. The number of combinations of things that you can do and the order in which you can do them, yeah, is quite cool. Then what happens is the other player will take a turn and that carries on, okay? We will be taking multiple turns over and over again in this step here, or sorry, in this phase. Uh, and then as soon as we both pass in succession, that is when the phase ends, okay? So that'll be like when we run out of dice. When we <clears> run out, of, well, not necessarily dice. As I say, you, yeah, basically once you've done everything that you want to do, you will pass. And then once we've both passed, we go to phase three where there is recovery. So some of the, some of the units have a recovery ability uh, and will take damage. Uh, remove exhaustion, we'll come on to that in a minute, and then you exhaust dice. So I mentioned you can keep any dice you want to keep, any dice you don't want to keep, you exhaust. You voluntarily move them and say, I don't want this one anymore. You exhaust it, and then it'll be ready for the next round. Okay, that is a very high level overview of how the game plays. To give you an idea, and this, this surprised me the first time I played it, a game is likely to last, and Ben will correct me if I'm wrong, about four to six rounds, okay? Now, that might appear that this is not a long game, and it's because phase two will go on for ages. Phase two is back and forth with us both taking turns, but the number of rounds that you play is actually not a lot, uh, and the game escalates quite a lot. Right, okay, why are cards gray when you zoom in? Uh, that's because the card is gray. If I zoom in on that one, it's not quite gray. I can up the color a bit. If it's, if it's a little bit washed out, I can up the color, because I set that camera up this morning. Uh, is that doing it? Oh no, that's me. <laughs> I'm, I'm upping the color of me. Where is the camera? Yeah, just for the record, uh, no offense to your video equipment, but it's not doing this art as much justice no, as no, it no. could. No, the, the art the, is This game fantastic. is absolutely stunning. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's always had a reputation for having extremely good and clear graphic design and, uh, and artwork. There you go. Right, we have more color on the cards now. Okay. My hand is bluish. Yeah, okay, so that, that's hopefully fixed that. Right, I've changed the colours. So there we go, right. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna jump in and we're gonna start and we're gonna go with phase one, step one, roll dice. So on the first round of the game, I'm gonna use my new dice tray, which I got from E-Raptor. Uh, basically, each player will roll all of their dice. So I'm gonna roll all of your dice for you. I'm gonna roll all of mine. And then what I do is I line the dice up alongside the cards, which is why I have the cards vertical, um, like that, and then I've rolled one of those and four leaves. Okay, so each of the dice has three different symbols on it. There is the basic mana symbol, which is the same on all dice. All dice have this icon, uh, that is the basic mana, but then there is two higher levels than that. Let's roll your starting dice and see what you get. Are they two sides of each? Uh, no, no, there's more basic. Uh, I think there is two basic. Yeah, two basic, three of the middle, and then one of the top. Oh, the other thing as well to mention is that when you do go down the building your own deck route, you choose which 10 dice you want to play with. You can actually have any 10 dice at all. Um, but these are the 10 dice that it recommends, certainly for this starting character. Right, okay, there you go. So there are, there are your starting dice. Uh, now, what happens for the first round is we count which player has the most basic mana dice. You have three and I have two, which means you are the start player, okay? And that will alternate each round. So you are the start player for this round. Uh, that, is, that, that dice roll to determine who the start player was, that's it now. It now alternates at the end of each round. Okay, Faced, uh, sorry, step two is discard cards, which we're not going to do. Step three is draw cards, which we're not going to do because we're at our hand limit. And now we go into player turns. You get to go first, so you get to do one main action and possibly, if you want to, one side action. So let's go through the different main actions that you can do, because there are only four of them on here, and one of them is pass, which you do not want to do. <laughs> well, you could, because I'm not likely to pass, and then you would come back in, okay? But you probably oh, don't okay. want to. Yeah, the, the round only ends if both players pass consecutively, and once you've passed, you can come back in. Gotcha. So, here are the four different main actions that you can do. One, pass, which we're not going to do. Two, attack a Phoenixborn, which is how you deal damage to the Phoenixborn, but you can only attack with creatures. 
your Phoenix born, uh, so Cole himself cannot attack. So you can't do that one. Attack a unit, you can't do that one either. So the only thing you can actually do right now um, is to pay one of those costs. And you'll see that icon in a number of different places. And that is the icon for a main action. Okay. And let's have a look at the different main actions that you have. And I'm going to show you your cards in hand. Okay. So these are the five cards you have in your hand at the moment. And the green screen here is going to affect some of them. Yeah, it's going to affect that one. Okay. Um, and you will see in the top right of each card, it tells you the cost to play that card. And you notice the top icon on each one is the main action. In fact, that's a bit bright now, isn't it? That thing. So let's oh, so that's in the top one is an action, not a not a dice. Correct. Race. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I'll turn it down a bit. So in, in so I could summon an iron rhino for one leaf. Uh, as your main action and one leaf, you can put this card into play. Okay, which is something you want to do. So let's do that. Okay. Now the card itself says at the top, it is a ready spell and the little bit afterwards spell board. What that means is uh, that this card goes onto your spell board. Okay. Ah, okay. So then now, I'll be later able to summon an Your an spell iron. board is there. Now, there is a message in the chat, so thank you very much, that you should actually decide who will be the first player. So you you won the dice roll. So rather than you being the first player, you uh, can well, choose I think, who's the I first player. I think I've player. already committed at this point. There you point. go. You've already, you've already committed. Good to know the actual rule. Yeah, thank you very much in the chat. Um, so there you go. You have played this card. That cost you a leaf. Now... That is usually this dice, but just to let you know, you can always use a higher dice as if it was a lower one. No, I'll probably save the frog in case I need yeah. it for later. Yeah, you will. So that goes that goes there. Um, right, and that is your main action done. You have played that card. That is on your spell board. What does it do? Well, if you look at the card, if you look down at the bottom of the card, it has a main action printed on it. So now that you have that card in play, you can now use its main action on a future turn to do what it says on there. Okay? But for now, that is your main action done. Now, you also have um, a side action. Let's just remind ourselves what the side actions are. Okay. The side actions are pay a cost, and that is the icon for a side action, or you can meditate, or you can activate a dice power. Okay? So let's just have a look to see if you've got any cards with that on. I don't think... Oh, no, you do. Your Phoenix Born. If we have a look at the Phoenix Born. Okay. See this? That is the side action ability. So okay. you could, if you wanted to, activate this ability as a side action. Uh, and what that means is the name of the ability is Slash. Side action. Uh, it's discard a card. I believe that is discard a card. Pretty sure that's discard a card. Ben will tell me if I'm wrong. Discard. To pay the cost, you must choose and discard a number of cards from your hand equal to the number shown. Yes. So that will be discard one card from hand to deal one damage to a target unit. If an opponent has no units in play, you may deal the damage to the Phoenix Born instead. And this is a very good distinction. Your Phoenix Born is not a unit. Okay. I will discard a card and playing you for one. You're going to do it. Right. I okay. Am. Now, which card are you going to discard? I'm going to get rid of the one that your green screen doesn't like. Okay, the expand energy. So yes. that is discarded. You've discarded a card um, and you deal one damage to target unit. There isn't a target unit, which means you can deal one damage to my Phoenix Ball. You know, okay. it was bothering me that you started with more hit points. So then we <laughs> when even that out. Right. Now, notice this, this ability here, you don't exhaust it to use it. So you can use this as many times as you want on your well not, one, not on a turn once i can use it once as my once side per action turn. yes exactly okay but of course it's using up a card in hand every time right so there you go that's your main action and that's your side action done so now it's over to me so what i'm going to do is i am going to play um i am going to play summon blue jaguar as my main action. So if you want to go and get that card out from my deck on your side of things, 
That is a spell which has gone onto my spell board. No. Uh, and I don't think I'm going to do a side action. Let's have a think about this. Um, no, I am going to do a side action. Okay, here's what we're going to do as a side action. Um, if you remember, one of the side actions that we could do is activating a dice power. Okay, that is one of the side actions that you can do. And the dice, if you look at your reference cards for the dice, the top okay, level, I see. Yeah, the top level dice has a power which is detailed down at the bottom. So as a side action, if I spend a wolf, I assume it's a wolf, I can move one die from an opponent's active dice pool to that opponent's exhausted dice pool. So what I'm going to do is, because it's illusion magic, I am going to spend this wolf here, so that moves into my exhausted dice pool, and I'm going to move your frog into there. How rude. Okay. Uh, and that is my go. That was my main action and my side action. It's now your go. All right. Well, I want to see if I could summon this iron rhino, but you're going to have to walk me through this yeah, terminology to see okay. if I can. Yeah. So, so all of these like icons. My, my, my main action, I got yeah. that one. The and next it looks icon. Like I have to spend six basic energy, but I don't know what the middle one is. All right, the middle one is this token. Okay. No, Which I is the exhaustion have... token. Oh, but it'll just exhaust this card then. Exactly. So I, yes. So I can it, do. Oh, so I can do this. Yeah. This is the equivalent of tapping the card okay but not Gosh. quite because some counters uh, some cards can have multiple exhaustion units on them uh, sorry oh. multiple exhaustion tokens on them so it's more now, granular at the end of your round or sorry at the end of the round one exhaustion token is going to be removed from every card okay so if it had more than one on it it would take it multiple rounds before it came back okay so it's your main action it exhausts the card and you have to spend six basic mana Okay, and then what is this focus? Um, Don't worry about that, that says, for now. Oh, so I can't use that to, no, we'll to lower come, it. We'll okay. come to that later on. All right, well, I'll use the three basic, and then I'll yep. use three of the um, the red knives. Three of the daggers, yeah. Give me one of each. I don't okay. know if that... Okay, so what we do is we, we go through your conjuration pile, and we bring Which into is, play... It's all the same. It's all Iron Rhinos. This is the only creature that you can summon. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's have a look at the Iron Rhino. Uh, who has a hole in his head because <laughs> it's green <laughs> so let, let's just put uh let's just put a counter on his head there you go right okay so iron rhino it attacks for five it has four life and it does not recover so damage in this game stays so okay. it doesn't automatically heal at the end of the round unless you've got uh recover okay so that is an iron rhino that comes into play that is on the battlefield speaking of the battlefield we now have battlefield here spell board here and let's just have a look at your character again because there's two extra stats on your character that says battlefield six spell board five Those that is a limit. limits yeah you may only have in total six units on the battlefield and you may only have in total five spells on your spell board okay all the characters are slightly different so you have that on there now what do you do with it i will refer you back to the different main actions that you can do Attacking is a main action, so you can't attack with it this turn. Okay. You could attack with it next turn. All right. Okay. What does meditating do? So meditating is one of the most powerful abilities in the game, and this is something that cropped... Uh, it, it, yeah, it tricked me out the first time I played this game. Because I thought, oh, wait a minute, Paul, you don't like random elements in games, and this game has dice. And what if you roll <laughs> terribly? Okay. Now, the meditate ability... Uh, allows you to change your dice to any side you want to. But for each dice that you change, you must discard a card from either your hand, your deck, or from your spell board. Oh, okay. Now, right now, let's say you really, really needed a frog, you would probably want to meditate. So I would just toss one from my you just uh, toss one deck. card from your deck onto your discard pile, okay. meditate for one, and then you would turn the dice. But, At this but stage, knowing that you could take your wolf card, a uh, wolf exactly. dice, and just get rid of it, I am not going to yeah, do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so meditating is absolutely essential if you don't have the dice that you need. 
Okay, right, my go. Let's have a look at my blue Jaguar. Um, it's too late for my blue Jaguar. So it's very interesting is that the characters all play very differently and the characters also play very differently depending on who they're playing against. And you are absolutely okay. right to go first because if I get a blue Jaguar out before you get your Iron Rhino out, as soon as it comes into play, I just gaze at it and it basically freezes it. No. Um, yeah, so as it is, me playing the blue Jaguar right now is probably not the best move. Okay, so we need to have a think about how we're going to deal um, with this Iron Rhino. Okay, what, I, what I'm going to do is I am going to just, as my main action, I am going to play Summon Mist Spirit. So I'm going to put another spell on my spell board. And do I want to do anything as a side action? Uh, hmm. Yeah, I think, no. Um, No, I think we're good. I'm not going to do a side action. Oh, okay. don't expect me to be very good at this game. I love it and I like playing it, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not very good at the game at all. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do anything. So it's back to you. No, I can attack and you can't defend because you don't uh, have any characters. Though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. I'm going to attack you with my gigantic iron rhinoceros. Yeah. Okay. So when you attack, you have two options. You can either attack a unit but I don't have any, or you attack my Phoenix Born. Okay. Oh, so I could, if you had a unit out, I could still choose Absolutely. to attack Absolutely. Yeah. You can you can attack a unit directly, or you can attack my Phoenix Born. So, uh, yeah, so this is a really good opportunity for you to get five damage on my Phoenix Born that I can't do anything about. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. So what you do is you, you declare it as an attacker. You declare that you're attacking my Phoenix Born. Correct. If I had any units, my units could jump in the way to defend oh, okay so you could but, choose to but i don't uh so what happens is you you exhaust and you deal me five damage all right there you go so that is now exhausted that will unexhaust at the end of the round it does mean that if i attack that it will not be able to hit me back okay because it's exhausted okay and i will also um use my side slash attack mm-hmm and I will discard this this uh, Hammer Knight because I can it's no longer really afford to bring it. them out this turn anyway. Okay. So I'm going to do one more damage. To use one more damage. Just to bring out anyone to, to, to block. Wow. Right. Okay. So I'm down. I've, I've taken seven damage already. <laughs> wow. Okay. My go. I am going to play... Um... I'm going to play Shifting Mist as a spell on my spell board. All right. So that so costs you, my... your character is spell heavy? Uh, yeah, yeah. So Shifting Mist costs me my main action and a mask to play the card. So I'm going to exhaust a mask. Uh, and then its ability is actually a side action. So as a side action, I'm going to exhaust this card. And it allows me to change two dice in my active pool to a side of my choice. So I'm going to turn that basic manner into a frog and that into a frog as well okay that is my go done main action side action over to you okay i am going to bring out uh with my last two dice my iron worker okay now this is an ally so it's your main action and two mana to play it but allies work in a slightly different way than conjurations okay. because if they die they go to your discard pile Okay. Whereas a conjuration just goes back to your pile and you can keep conjuring it over and over and over again. Okay, so let's have a look at the Iron Worker. Okay, ally. Uh, it's resourceful one. So when the unit comes into play, which is now, we put a resource token, sorry, we put a status token on the unit. Status tokens are the green ones, which on my camera have shown up as red <laughs> because of the green screen. Um, uh, at the beginning of the player's turn phase, place one status token on this unit, and at any time on your turn, you may remove any number of status tokens from this unit. Each status token removed, you may take one additional side action this turn. Okay, so there we go. 
And I'm going to take my regular side action and discard my last card to hit you for one more. Oh, he's really doing it. Right, okay. Well, I can't afford these things anymore, and I know I get to draw back it's up true. to five. It'll draw so. back up. Right, okay. Um, just be very careful. If you play Cole against one of the other decks, which is designed to, to run you out of deck. cards and burn through okay. your deck. So yeah, just be just be aware of that. You <laughs> might it's fine with me, but against other people, <laughs> uh, might be a bit dangerous. So your iron worker is in play. Your iron worker has two attack, two life, and it has recover one. So at the end of the round, if it has taken any damage, it's going to recover one. All right. Right then. So I'm going to be. Hmm. I I did have a plan. But that's just changed things. Uh, yeah, it has. Well, the uh, first thing little, I'm going to do... My, my little old iron worker has changed your plan. Yeah, it has. So <laughs> I'll just let you know Aradel's special ability. Okay. Winter Blast. So as a side action, I can exhaust this character, spend a leaf to deal two damage to a target unit. Okay. So... The reason it's changed my plans is I was going to deal two damage to the Iron Rhino and then try and kill it. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that. So I'm going to do my side action first. I'm going to exhaust Aradel, spend a leaf, and I'm going to deal two damage to the Iron Worker. Oh, Iron Worker, we hardly knew you. There you go. So the Iron Worker is gone. Now, there aren't any in these decks, but in some of the other decks there are reaction spells, which... As you, as the name suggests, you cast them in reaction to a particular so thing happening. Like they're like interrupts. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was my side action. For my main action, I am going to summon a blue jaguar, which is main action exhaust cost two basic mana. So that'll be one of those and one of those, and I put a blue jaguar conjuration onto the battlefield. Okay, so let's have a look at my blue jaguars. And how is it that you say Jaguar in America? Jaguar. Ja yeah, it's almost the same, isn't it? Yeah. It's without the. It's basically without the U. Without the, U. the hard U. Yeah, because you don't like U's in America. So, <laughs> <laughs> so here is my blue Jaguar. Um, it has an ability of Gaze One. So after a unit comes into play on the opponent's battlefield, I can spend a basic mana to exhaust that unit. Okay. So yeah, they're really good at getting these out first. And just so you know, this thing here down in the bottom right, that means that only my character can have this card. So okay. if, you, if you ever do go down the deck construction route, this card and my Summon Blue Jaguar spell can only ever belong in Aradel Summer Guard's deck. You cannot oh, use so these my, cards elsewhere. My, my Iron Rhino is not uh, special to, Correct. to my guy. Absolutely. He's, uh, is a mercenary. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I have summoned a blue jaguar. Uh, I did my side action. It is your go, sir. Uh, I'm going to pass because yeah. I, uh, okay, I have nothing so I, I can do. I've still got lots of things to do. Um, and I think, if I have understood this correctly, I can actually kill the Iron Rhino. No, I can't. Oh. No, I hope I you haven't understood no, it correctly. No, and, and I'm going to show you why I can't. Because I am actually going to declare an attack, and I'm going to attack the Iron Rhino. Okay? All right. I am going to attack it with my Blue Jaguar. Now, here's how the rules are different when I am attacking a unit as opposed to attacking a Phoenix Spawn. Okay? If I was to attack a Phoenix Spawn, any of your other units can jump in and defend. But okay. if I attack a unit your other units cannot jump in to defend unless okay. they have a special ability called Unit Guard. Okay, okay? That However, makes sense. However, your Phoenix Born can jump in to defend. Oh. So, I am attacking with the Blue Jaguar on the Iron Rhino. Would you like to defend with your Phoenix Born? Now, how much damage does he do? Uh, he or does two. No, I mean, the how much damage does my Phoenix Born do? Does he do any, or no. he'll just take damage? No. Phoenix Borns do not attack at all. They just they just take damage. No, I will not be soaking the damage with my Phoenix Born. Right. So just to let you know, if you don't, I'll let you know what's going to happen. My Blue Jaguar is going to deal two damage to you, and you're not okay. going to deal any damage back because you're yep. already exhausted. Okay. So you would take two damage. 
If you Correct. have a look over here, I have two frogs. Oh, that's going to do two more damage, isn't it? That will do two more damage. Oh. So maybe I do want to take the two damage? It's, it's up to you, but it would use my two frogs, but that's kind of what they're there for. Yeah, I'll take the two damage with the Phoenix Born. Okay, so Cole steps in. I exhaust the Blue Jaguar, and you take two damage. Okay, so that was my main action. My side action is going to be to use a frog and ping the Iron Rhino, deal it one damage. Okay, okay. that's my go done. Your go. I pass. Okay, uh, another quick note about passing. You can still do a side action and pass. Okay, now you're not going to in this situation, but just to let you know, you can do that. You can do a side action and then pass. Uh, right, okay, so my go. Let us summon a Mist Spirit. So I'm going to exhaust my summoned Mist Spirit. I'm going to spend a mask. I'm going to put a Mist Spirit Conjuration onto the battlefield. So these are cute, these guys. <laughs> uh, it looks like something out of the Frozen. Yeah, they've basically got one attack, one life, but they're really good at just blocking and getting in the way. So I've summoned that. That's my main action. As my side action, I am going to use another frog and put another one damage on the Iron Rhino. Okay, you'll go. I pass. <clears throat> okay, back to me. I am going to attack uh, the Iron Rhino with my Mist Spirit. Would you like to jump in the way and defend? I will not. I will take one more damage. Okay. Remember, I'm going to be going first next round. Uh, okay, that's my go done. Your go. I pass. I guess you're passing. Okay, I am going to put another spell onto my spell board. This is Summon Butterfly Monk, uh, which I can't actually use. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have used that frog. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, and as my side action, oh, I've got a card in hand and I don't know whether I want to use it. Um, yeah, this is a card in hand which increases the life of my units, but I don't know whether I want, no, I, I'm going to, I mean, I'm, I'm going to do it. So side action, spend a leaf, I'm going to put root armor and I am going to put it onto the Mist Spirit. So I'll just show you this card here. We can all say right. meditate. No, I'm all right, I'm all right. So it's got, it does two things. First of all, it increases its life by two. So you can see at the top, it is an alteration spell that you play on a unit. All right. So it tells you what type of spell it is and where you play it, okay? So I'm going to play this on the Mist Spirit. So its life is going to go from one to three, but you see it's got this respark ability, okay? So normally, if a unit dies with an alteration spell on it, the alteration spell will go to the discard pile, but it's got respark. So if I spend one basic mana, I can basically put this card back into my hand. Okay. So there we go. So I have root armor on the mist spirit. Uh, I have no cards in hand. I have one dice left, but I'm not going to use it. So it's back to you. And if you pass... I do pass. And then I pass. That is the end of the round. Okay, round one is over and we go to the recovery phase. So step one is recover. If any of our characters have the recover ability, they will heal hit points. Then we do remove exhaustion. So we remove one exhaustion token from every card in play. Okay, uh, exhaust dice. I may now, if I want to, exhaust this dice, but I don't want to because it's, it's the best it can be. And then we go to round two. So round two, turn order passes to me, and let's re-roll all of these dice. There we go. So mask, mask, two basic mana. Uh, I got one frog, three leaves, and one basic mana. Okay, that's my dice. Uh, all of your dice were exhausted, so let's give them a roll. Okay, so not good i'm afraid no no super powered ones Thanks. four leaves and a basic don't forget you can meditate but <laughs> if you really need to there you go 
Right, so they are your dice. Uh, discard any number of cards from hand. Neither of us have any cards in hand. And then you draw back up to your hand size. So at this point, you want to draw five cards from your deck, and I do not know what you've got. And I'm going to draw no, five cards don't. from your deck. But as I say, if you have any questions about any of the cards you've got, let me know. Oops. Let's have that one. One, two, three. Four, oh, I five. meant it. Um, you, I asked you earlier, and you said not to worry about it at the time, but what does focus mean? Okay, so if you had, for example, another Summon Iron Rhino card in hand. Okay. When you were to put it onto your spell board, you would not put it as a separate card. You would put it on top of that one like that, except face up. Okay? Okay. Okay. It gives you, that does two things. First of all, it gives you the ability to summon two Iron Rhinos in a turn because you have two of those cards in play. Um, no, in fact, you put it like that so you can see both of the texts. That's it. Um, but also, because you now have two of them in play, the Focus 1 ability now applies to both of the cards. So it basically, it improves the version of the spell that you've got for both copies of it. All right. And Focus 2 is if you've got all three in play. Right, so, my go. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to use the, my side action and I'm going to use this frog to ping your Iron Rhino. Oh no. So Iron Rhino goes back there and as my main action, I'm going to summon... Uh, Hmm. Let's summon a... Let's use two basic mana and let's summon another blue jaguar. Okay. Okay. So, whenever your units come into play, I can gaze them down. And... That is it. That was my side action first, then my main action. Over to you, sir. Alrighty. I will play the Chant of Revenge using okay. one of my dagger dice. I guess that's the ceremonial knife. So this is a ready spell. It's going to go on your spell board. Yep. Uh, and while it is on your spell board, let's just have a look at what it does. Whenever a unit you control is destroyed, you may place one exhaustion token on this spell to deal one damage to target unit or phoenix spawn. Okay, right. That's fine. There and I will be discarding a card yeah. to deal one damage to one of your blue jaguars. Okay. Which card are you discarding? It's a protect spell. Protect. Okay, so that's going... There you go. I'm just going to, because you've now got three cards in hand, haven't you? So I have three pop, cards in hand, uh, correct. Three cards there, so that I know you've got three cards in hand. Okay. Right. My go. Um, okay. So, I think... I am going to use my main action first, and I am going to attack your Phoenix Born with this Blue Jaguar. Uh, you don't have any units to defend, so we exhaust I that. I don't. And I deal you two damage. One, two. And my side action will be to uh, exhaust the Shifting Mist and turn this into a frog and that into a frog. There we go. Okay. You'll go. All right. Huh. Okay. I will bring out a protect spell. And uh, you can uh, just yep. charge me the dagger and the leaf for that. Okay. So it costs one leaf and one dagger. And you've put this onto your spell board. Uh, yes. When this spell comes into play, put three status tokens on it. Discard this card when it's no longer got any status tokens. When a unit you control would receive damage, can remove any number of status tokens and for each one. Right, okay, nice. 
Sure would have been handy before you killed my rhino. Yeah. <laughs> but However, such is life. The next rhino will be super protected. Um, okay, so. And now I can do a side action. You can, yep. And uh, let's see. I can. Uh, I will get. I will discard a card to kill that one. Um, that okay. one jaguar. Which I'm card just, are you discarding? It's a strengthen card. Strengthen has been discarded. Okay, so you have one card left in hand. I do. Okay, and that is the blue jaguar. Back there. Okay, my go. So an iron rhino is probably going to come out, but as soon as it does, I'm going to be able to stare it down. Um, which means I could probably do this. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to, as my main action, I am going to summon a butterfly monk, which costs a frog, and it is my third type of unit that I have. So this is the Butterfly Monk. Um, so it has unit guard, so it can guard my other units. Uh, and when the unit is destroyed, I remove one wound token from a target unit or Phoenix Bone. It can basically heal something as it disappears. And its life is equal to the number of summoned Butterfly Monk spells on my spell board, which is at the moment one. So there we go. Uh, just a quick note, following on from your earlier question about focus, you know I said that if you play another another spell of the same type, it goes uh -huh. vertically. That does not take up a slot on your spell board. That makes sense. Uh, I think... I think I'm done. Yes. All right. Your go. I am going to dis, uh, discard a card. Uh-huh. Which is... No, no, no. Not from my hand. From my deck. Oh, right. Okay. To meditate. To, uh, meditate. Yes. Okay. You. Yeah, you can you can meditate any number of times you want, if you wanted to do more. Oh, then then yes. How many times would you like to meditate? Uh, three. Wow. So three cards off your deck, and you can turn three dice into anything you want. Uh, you could turn all three of those leaves into frogs. Okay. <laughs> I see what's coming. Okay, so that was your side action. Yes, I'm done. So I, I passed my main action. So you passed your main action, and your side action was that. You see, if I pass now, the round is over. You sure you want to give me that option? Yes. Okay, I'm probably I'll not going to pass. I'll go first next exactly. time. So that's, exactly, exactly. That's no um, big deal to me. Yeah, okay, so first thing I'm going to do is, oh, let's have a look at that illusion magic. Do I need it? Oh, you're just going to start pinging my things off, aren't you? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, the first thing I'm going to do is, as my main action, I am going to play another Summon Butterfly Monk spell. Uh, right, I was hoping you didn't Right have onto here. So that now has two life instead of one right so that's a main action and as my side action um no side action for me you'll go oh okay uh, alex is asking in the chat what made you want to play ashes today so i mentioned this right at the start of this video um eric has been wanting me to teach him how to play ashes for a very long time he knows that i love the game uh this weekend we both should have been at a convention in America where I may have actually sat down and taught him how to play so that's that's why we're doing it this weekend um yeah it's not a sponsored video at all my patron supporters didn't vote on this it's just yeah I love the game I wanted to give it some coverage uh and obviously the opportunity to teach Eric how to play so all right i am going to spend one of those frogs to do a damage to your mm -hmm. um uh, butterfly monk okay so that's one damage that's your side action and i pass okay still no main action 
Correct. So, interesting. I don't know whether you're going to summon an, a Rhino this turn. don't think you are. Okay, so I will, as my main action, I'm going to attack your Phoenixborn with this Butterfly Monk, because I don't think it's going to last much longer. <laughs> it's one damage. Ping! Okay, you have now taken five. Um, okay. Uh, in fact, actually, hang on. When I attack your Phoenixborn, I could have attacked with any number of creatures. Okay. I don't just have to attack with one at a time. So... No, I think you're going to do that. Yeah, so I will actually attack with all three. Okay. So it's another three damage. Ouch. And if you had multiple units, uh, you could block... E each attacker could be blocked by one defender. Okay, um, your go. I am going to knock out your butterfly monk with my yeah. frog dice. There you go. So that goes, but when it goes, uh, remove one wound from target unit or phoenix spawn. So it heals my phoenix spawn on its way out. There you go. Any main action? Nope. Okay. I pass. Uh, right then. Well, let's um, let's summon another mist spirit. So one of those and a mask. Let's get another Mist Spirit out. There you go. That's my main action done. Uh, side action. I don't think I have one. Nope, no side action. Back to you. I will spend that last frog dice to kill the Mist Spirit you the just brought out. It's just come out. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And you're passing a your main action? Correct. Okay. Uh, right, so I've used all of my spells. I haven't used that one. So we will summon another Butterfly Monk. They just keep coming. Great. Your go. I will discard this last card in my hand, which is a yeah. Strengthen, to do one damage to that Butterfly Monk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep them down. Uh, okay, so one damage. It, ah, now are you sure you want to do this? Because it has recover one. Hmm. So this won't kill it, and it means it will just heal that damage. Does your Jaguar have recover? It does not. Yeah, I guess put it on the Jaguar. So one damage on the Jaguar. Okay. Right, my go. I'm going to attack you with the Butterfly Monk. All right. So there's that. Um, and yeah, no side action for me, I don't think. So back to you. I pass. Okay. Now, what have we got here? Uh, we could do this. Oh, I should have done that. Oh, that was my mistake. Um, I'm going to pass as well. All right. Yeah, so that's the end of the round. Okay, so recover. That's the best possible news for me. I'll tell you, <laughs> I drew five I drew five spell cards, Paul. Okay, but you so could have I, done something I, with them? I, I, Well, I, I brought two of them out, but I just couldn't. I had no uh, minions to bring out that turn. Right. Made well, it, remember uh, you've got your Summon Iron Rhino. It does cost six, but... Oh, I thought I needed another card to do that. No, that's no, my, no. That's my idiocy. Right, All yeah. Right. Once, once this is in play, you can use it every turn. Oh, so. noted. Okay. Oh, I should have brought out another Rhino. You should. So, recover. That's remove exhaustion. Things. Yep. One, two, three. So, remove an exhaustion tokens from every card with an exhaustion token. Uh, exhaust dice. So, you may choose, if you want to, to exhaust any number of these dice. You can exhaust all of them all of them okay i'm going to keep mine in play so now we go to round three you are the start player and we roll some dice okay two leaves and a frog all right and let's see what we roll for you oops there we go so three leaves 
Uh, two basic mana. Uh, a nasty red demon wolf thing. Three sacrificial knives or ceremonial knives and a basic mana there. Okay, is that clear? You can see the dice? Yep. Cool. Right, discard any number of cards you want from your hand. You don't have any, and then you draw five. All right. Okay, whereas I have four cards in hand, so I need to decide which ones of these I want to keep. I'm going to get rid of that one. So that's going to the discard. Um, and that's going to the discard as well. So I'm drawing three. One, two, three. Okay, you'll go. I am going to play 100 Blades. Okay. At the cost of two basic uh, energy. You could spend one black die, one blue die would be fine. Yep. Okay. So 100 Blades. So this is an action spell. So we haven't covered action spells yet. What they do is they do what they say on them and then they go to the discard pile. Yep, that is what I assumed. Okay, deal one damage to a target Phoenix born. I guess that's me. Yeah, yeah, well, I will not deal... be targeting myself. <laughs> and deal one damage to all opponent's units. And then you draw one card. Now, this is your signature card. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that makes sense. I was, like, I was like, wow, that's a really good one. Yeah, there you go. So one on there, one on there, one on there. That kills the Blue Jaguar. All right. Nice. And then for my side action, I'm going to do use discard and expand energy to get rid of your sprite um, butterfly monk. Yep. Okay. Is that gone? There we go. Right. Okay. So, um, well, the first thing I'm going to do is bring a blue jaguar back into play. <laughs> so that's two basic mana. Uh, I'll use one of those and one of those. There we go, it's back. All right. Uh, side action. Have I got a side action? Um, I, ooh. Yes, side action with a leaf. I'm going to put root armor on the blue jaguar. So that's got four life. Okay, you'll go. All right. Oh, I've just read Summon Mist Spirit. I missed that. There's a bit of extra text on the card that I didn't read. Okay. I... I am going to... What am I going to do? I'm going to bring out a Hammer Knight. Okay. From my hand. Uh, so, Hammer Knight. So, it's a main action to play. Also, costs the demon thing, a leaf, yep. and a basic mana. So, I assume you want to use the, the natural yep. basic? Yeah. That'll be fine. Okay. So, that comes into play. That sits on the battlefield. Um, now. After, an opponent, after a unit comes into play on an opponent's battlefield, you may spend a basic mana to put an exhaustion token on it. So I'm totally doing that. Uh, that makes sense. So I've gazed it, gazed it down. Okay. Uh, that was your main action, wasn't it? Uh, yes, it was. Okay. Any side action? Uh, yes. I am going to. Uh, I'm going to meditate for two. Okay. To two put cards. those two blues blues up into frogs. You okay. got it. Okay. Where are the two? How are you meditating? Is it cards from hand? Cards from your deck? From my deck. Okay. Remember your third option when you meditate, which is rare at this point in the game, but maybe later. You can actually discard spell cards from your spell board to meditate. Gotcha. Okay. Right. My go. I am going to reread the text on the Summon Mist Spirit, so it actually allows me to spend a mask and a basic mana to bring into play two Mist Spirits. Bop, bop. 
There you go. So that's my main action. Um, my side action will be to use one of these uh, wolves to get rid of one of your frogs. There you go. Thanks. Okay, that's all right. So these uh, mist spirits, how many hit points do they have? They have one. Yeah. All righty. But they are very cute. Yes. <laughs> I am going to play another 100 blades card. Oh. Okay. And that will do another damage to your Phoenix born. Uh, yeah, that goes there. That goes there. So another damage to my Phoenix born. And then one damage to all of my units, was it? Yep. Wow. And then I will use that frog dice to knock it because the. Uh, the other yep. one has three, right? So if I do that, I'll get rid of the other. Absolutely, mystery. yeah. That'll so, do that. Okay, so I'm going to spend a basic mana to respark that into hand. Okay, where's all my units gone? <laughs> okay, right then. Um. Okay, so. Yeah, well, that's not working, is it? Um. You can't do it much more, so I am going to spend a frog, exhaust uh, the summon butterfly monk, and bring into play a butterfly monk. Okay. Done. All right, I will bring out an iron worker. Okay, so this costs you two basic mana. So you're using two ceremonial knives. Um, do I want to stare that down? I don't think I do. No, I don't think I do. All okay. right. But then... at this stage in the game, I am just going to show you your two cards because there is a subtle difference between them. Okay. Okay. Both of them have an ability in a box. Yep. Yes. But this ability is in a slightly yellow box with an X above it. Yes. What that means is that this ability here can never be cancelled in any way. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, and Ben will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think if a unit is exhausted like this, this box text doesn't apply. But if this unit is exhausted, this text still does apply. Okay. Okay. Ben hasn't jumped in and told me I'm wrong. So he says, that's right, Paul. Maybe Ben's disappeared from the chat. But yes, there we go. So yeah, so anything that's in the yellowy box with the X on it, that is permanent. You can't, you can't get rid of that at all. Okay. Just wanted to mention that since I hadn't actually mentioned that yet. Okay, so the Iron Worker. Um, Okay, I'm not going to stare it down. I'm going to let it come into play. So it comes into play with a status counter. Okay, All right. Okay. Well, what was that for? Uh, but, well, well. <laughs> I mean, I can deal it two damage. I have Aradel, which I probably want to do, but it's using this. Oh, no, I'm probably going to have to. I kind of had plans for that. Um, but I think I'm going to have to. So yeah, side action. We're going to do two damage to the Iron Worker with. Wait! Don't don't. Oh oh! You've got recovery, I have haven't my you? Protect spell, oh, sir. Oh rats! Yeah. So okay. you will do two damage to my protect spell. I deal two damage to it. So yeah, I'd forgotten you had that. Oh I, rats! I counted on you forgetting that I had. <laughs> so that was my side action. Okay. So my main action. Right, here we go. We haven't had a, an attack like this before. As my main action, I am going to declare an attack. And I am going to attack with these two. And I am going to attack your iron worker. So here are your options. Okay. The hammer knight can't do anything because it doesn't have unit guard. Okay. Okay. You could defend with coal, which means I would deal three damage to coal. Okay. Or you could just accept that you're taking the uh, 
you know, accept the battle yourself. If you then accept this fight, you still have a choice. You could exhaust yourself, which means you would deal your damage back to me. Or okay. you could choose not to exhaust yourself, which means you wouldn't deal damage back to me, but it means you wouldn't then be exhausted. Now, in this situation... But I'm going to die. So you're going to die anyway. Any but sense. let's say this had 10 life, yeah, and you wanted to do something with it next turn, you just would say, okay, I'll, I'll just take it on the chin, and then at least the unit isn't exhausted. So you've got, you've got lots of options, generally. Uh, oh, I need a leaf for water blast. Okay, so... I need to slightly undo that. Your protect spell still has three. Thank you very much. I used the wrong mana. Yeah, the water blast needed a leaf, and a leaf is natural magic, and I didn't have one. Thank you, chat. Ah, okay. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, then, does this cha change your attack plans? Um, it probably does, to be honest. <laughs> it probably does. Um, yeah, okay, so... Oh... Gosh, um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put another summon the mist spirit onto my spell board, uh, and then I am done. Okay, your go. So resourceful. When this unit comes into play, uh, and at the beginning of the player, hang on, at the beginning of the player turns, you may remove any. I assume that's once per round. Well, it's says... Oh, yeah, sorry. At the beginning of the player turns phase. Yeah, that's... Okay. Yeah, phase, phase two, two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, he just has one token on him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if we play another round, make sure the new guy knows about ceremonial dice power and the Anconaut synergy. Yes, just to let you know, your dice powers... Obviously, you have the frog, but you also have this. If you were to use the power die from ceremonial magic, it allows you to choose an ally from your discard pile and basically... Put it, put it back into your hand. Okay. Okay, you take damage for doing it, but there is a combo with your um, anchor naught. So. There All we go. right. Okay. Huh, I think I am going to attack, mm -hmm. but I don't know who I am going to attack. Okay. Remember, my butterfly monk has unit guard. So if you were to attack the Jaguar, the Butterfly Monk could step in. Hmm. Well, I may as well just attack the Butterfly Monk then. Okay. Um, so, oh, do I want to step in with Aradel? <laughs> I'm glad I'm going first next round because I'm, yeah. I think I'm going to step in with Aradel. Okay. So you exhaust, I take two damage. There you go. I've taken 11. Out of 16? 16. All right. Yeah. Okay. All done? I am. Right. So I am going to summon another Mist Spirit. There you go. That's my main action. Um, oh, I didn't use the Shifting Mist. Rats. I forgot about that. Side action, I don't have a side action. So, back to you. I will... Um, uh, I will. I could bring out multiple spells, right? Yeah. Uh, so I have a chant of revenge in my hand. Okay. I you have can... a chant of revenge out. Yeah, you can play yeah. it, and that would if be a second put, one on there. If I put two of them out, will you then take two damage? I believe so. All right, I'll... I'll... Put one, put two of them out. I will yeah. use my last knife dice to put two of them out. Okay. So, I will also use my side action to toss my last card to get rid of your Mist Spirit. Okay. So you have no cards in hand. Correct. Yeah, you're definitely running out of cards in your deck. <laughs> yeah, but you're running out of life. So. I am running out of life, yes. Yeah, definitely. Um... Okay, so my go. Can't do anything with these. Don't have any dice left. So I think I'm just going to attack your... Um, yeah, if I attack your Iron Worker with my Blue Jaguar, 
you're already exhausted, which means you don't deal any damage back to me. Okay. So I deal two damage to you. I will I... use the protect oh. spell then, right? Oh, yes, I forgot. Keep forgetting. <laughs> I don't know how many me. times I have to use it. I know. <laughs> or you remember it. I thought, oh, you could have just jumped in with that, but that that's fine. Um, okay, it's, I'm going to attack you with the butterfly monk as well. So... I assume you're using the well. You could jump in with Arida, uh with coal, or you could use the protect spell. You know what? I may as well use the protect spell. Okay. So protect spell is now used up and gone, uh, and I think we are done. I think that is the end of the round. If you're passing, uh, how many d uh, damage does the but the butterfly monk do? Uh, one. You know what? And you were attacking the iron worker. Um, I was, yes. Then I will take the one damage, because I got one recover. Oh, that's very true. Yeah, good point. I've forgotten about and that I will well. leave. I will leave one on the protect spell to annoy you further yeah. with it later. Yeah, yeah good play. <laughs> okay, so phase three is recovery phase. So you do recover one. We then remove some exhaustion tokens. I told you I wasn't very good at this game. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Exhaustion tokens have been removed. Exhaust dice. Neither of us have any dice. So we move to round four. Um, yeah, I suspect this is either going to be over this round or next round. So well, I'm running out of I'm running out of cards. So if it's not over this round, that's, that's true. And I think the rules are: anytime you need to draw a card and you can't, you take a damage. I think that's the rules. Somebody in the chat will tell me. Ben will probably tell me. Okay, so I drew two frogs and some leaves, and let's see what you get. Okay, so you did get the power dice of the ceremonial. Uh, you got three knives and a basic, and no frogs, unfortunately. I'm not good at rolling frogs for you. No, that's that is definitely true. Four leaves and a basic. Right. Okay. So off we go. Uh, drawing a card at other times doesn't damage you unless there's a special effect. Yeah. So it's only when you draw cards in the draw step that you will take damage. Okay. If you don't have enough. Okay, so discarding cards and then drawing cards. I'm I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to keep that. So I draw two cards, and you draw five. Just have a check. How many cards have you got left in your deck? I have three after yeah, my draw. I thought so. Okay. Right, so it's me first. Um... Okay, so, now the Hammer Knight, oh dear. Okay, so I think this will work. No, it won't because of the Protect. Right, I need to remember the Protect. <laughs> nah. Oh, uh, you get a status token on it. There you go. Right. So, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, okay, so as my main action, I am going to play Steady Gaze. It costs me two masks, but I put two exhaustion tokens, and I'm going to put them on the Hammer Knight. Basically hypnotised it for a bit. Lovely. That's my main action, and as my side action... I am going to I am going to play out of the mist. I can't. I don't have the oh, I don't have the right dice. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to meditate. Second uh, side action I'm going to meditate. I'm going to put that there and I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, you go. This is tense. Oh, it, it is. So what is, what's the advantage of me bringing out a second a Summon Rhino card? I, I get to... Ooh. I'll spend one, but then I'll have to spend one less. Yes. When I, so it'll be like a, a moot point? Um, at this stage in the game, probably, yeah. All right, so I'm, I'll just save that card to ping you with my special yeah. ability. Yeah. 
Um, all right. Yeah, I mean, if you can ping me five times now, I'm dead. Yeah, but I, well, I have to ping your uh, your characters first, so that's oh, the, that's true. Yes, yeah, that is the problem with that. All right. You know what? I am gonna I'm gonna play a card called Spiked Armor mm -hmm. onto my Iron Worker. Okay, so this is an alteration spell. Uh, you put it into play with a main action. It costs you a leaf and a basic. So which basic would you like to use? I'll Blue use the red, red and black one. Black. Okay. Uh, this unit now has the following ability. So it has spiked skin. When this unit is damaged by one or more attacking or countering units, simultaneously deal two damage to each unit that is attacking or countering this unit. Okay, nice. Uh, and it also gives it an extra two life. Yeah, it make him extra fun. Yeah, so that was a main action. Have you got a side action? Do I have a side action? I am going to deal. use my uh, Rhino card that I was just telling you I was going to get rid of to ping your Jaguar. Okay. So one damage on the Jaguar. So that's now taken two damage. It has four life. Um, okay. So. Is he exhausted? Uh, he is. I don't know why he is. Maybe I didn't take it off from last turn. Yeah, I don't think he... Yeah, I've not done anything he's... with it, ever. Um, okay, so. Will this work? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw that out there. Um, I think it will, but uh, no. So I'm going to summon a Mist Spirit first mm, you uh, mist and spend another mana to make it two. So two Mist Spirits come into play. There you go. That's my main action. Uh, side action. Um... Nope, no side action for the moment. We're good. So I go. Yeah. All right. So I can I can do I haven't really played around with this. So I could do side action first. You can, yep. Yeah. And then main action. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm good then. I am going to use one side action, and then I'm going to use another side action by using the Iron Worker's ability. Yep. Yeah. And I'm going to toss two cards and do two damage to your Blue Jaguar. Okay. So that dies it has a respark on the root armor if i want to use it which i think i will do i want to no i'm gonna let it go it's fine okay so that goes there that goes there that goes there you've got one card in hand i do have one card in hand okay. but more importantly i have one iron rhino i'm putting out on the battlefield with my main action right so and which if you, six mana? One, two, three. I have eight. Uh, yes. If you could save me one leaf and uh, the, uh, what is it, that the skull. Yeah, okay. There we go. So those six are gone. The rhino comes into play, and because the blue jaguar is gone, I can't stare it down. Yeah, not an accident. <laughs> <laughs> Made me throw out my whole hand just to get that guy out there. All yeah. right. Now I'm okay. sure you'll have some card in hand that'll do it, though, right? Um, it's your turn, so. It is, yeah. I'm just thinking, I thought I'd used Aradel this turn, but maybe I haven't. No, I haven't. No. So Aradel's not been used, but you do still have the protection. Uh, wow. Okay, so if you're going to attack me, I can just block with these Miss Spirits, so that, that's okay. Because damage doesn't transfer over in this game unless you've got a special ability that says so. 
Um, so okay, I think this will work. Yeah, let's try this. I'm going to play as a main action. I'm going to summon another Mist Spirit, and it's going to be another two Mist Spirits. I can have eight things on the battlefield. So there we go. That's four Mist Spirits. Uh, so that was my main action, and my side action is going to be out of the mist. So it cost me the wolf, and it cost me a frog, but it deals X amount of damage to target unit, where X is the number of units you have in play. So I deal five damage to the iron worker. And I may draw a card, which I do. Okay. And I'm going to deal two damage to each unit that is attacked, but this isn't an attack. This is not an attack. No, this was a spell. Ah, okay. I'm going nowhere near him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I, I'm not going to use the protect because yeah. that one won't matter. So, so there you go. However, chance I of will revenge. use both of my chance of revenge. Yeah. Okay, so you exhaust both of them to deal two damage to my Phoenix Born. Correct. Okay, I have taken 13 damage. Wow. Okay, it is your go. I am going to use my main action. Uh, I will use the black dice to bring out another chant of revenge. So, there we go. Is that your last card in hand? That is my last card yeah, in hand. There you go. So the three chant of revenge is out. <laughs> chant of Trigger. revenge triggers, says Ben. Yes. Um... And I think... I will, I will, um, uh, I'll pass for now. Okay. Okay. So what's that doing there? That should be there and that should be there. Um, oh, that's not quite right. It's not quite right. Okay, now. Okay, I'm going to put, uh, as my main action, and I'm going to use this two, my two remaining magic, uh, to put a massive growth on the uh, butterfly monk which increases its attack and life by four. But this card will go at the end of the round. Okay. Okay, so that was my, that was my main action. Uh, I do not have a side action. So, you'll go. Huh. <sighs> I'll just try calling Ben back because I think he's been knocked out of the chat. Oh, he's just muted. He's just muted. I think he's still in the chat. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I will pass. Pass is the main action? Yep, I pass. And no side I'm action? Good. Yep, I'm done. So you're not using the Iron Rhino? Okay. Well, I, if I use them, I can't defend with them, right? Exactly. And exactly. now that you have that thing with the massive growth, I really, yeah. you've uh, forced my hand. Yeah. Okay. Well, my go, I'm going to attack your Phoenix Born with this Mist Spirit. Okay. I will t take one damage. Okay. Uh, right. You've taken the 10. Okay. All right. Your go. I pass. Okay, my go. Guess what I'm going to do? Yeah, you're going to do the same thing. <laughs> Attack you with this Miss Spirit. Okay. Shall I just go through the motions? 
Um, I'm, I'm one, one, two. Uh, no, you just beat me. You just beat me, Paul. Did I? Yeah, because I'm only I have I'm gonna take two damage when we go to draw at the end of the turn at the beginning of the next turn. Ah. So if I let you t- ping me with the two more miss spirits, right. I'll have, uh, that'll be that'll be that. I don't think right. there's any... Wow. Okay. Oh wait, wait. No, no, no. I know what no. I'm doing. I am gonna get rid of this uh, summon Iron Rhino card from my spell book to meditate. make to make that a frog. Yeah. And okay. That'll be my turn. So, so now you. Yeah. I then attack you, you with this Miss Spirit. And I will take one damage. Uh huh. Now, on my go, I will use the frog to kill the remaining Miss Spirit yeah, to spare me the one damage. Woo! Yeah, okay. Now, I've still got this Butterfly Monk. I know, but I still have the Rhino, so I can yeah. block that. So I am going to attack your Phoenix Born with the Butterfly Monk. And I will block with the Rhino. Okay, and you're going to exhaust to deal damage back to me. I think we basically kill each other. Okay. Oh, no, I don't. You deal five damage. I've got six life. Um, don't die. Yeah. And how much damage do you deal? I deal five. Oh. So the rhino goes. All okay. right. So I'm not dead technically yet, but then at the end of the round, you... this disappears, and then I do die. Okay, and then you will take one more chant of revenge from my third chant of revenge okay, for but killing my rhino. As the butterfly monk leaves play, I get to heal one. Oh, well. Okay, so I think we're all good. Oof. Rhino might not actually want to kill the butterfly and doesn't have to. So yeah, you didn't have to. Uh, but if he didn't... Oh yeah, here's the thing. Let's go back. Let's just go back a minute because I sure. think... I think Ben's hit on something here. And this is really important tactically. So I attacked. I attacked the Phoenix Born with okay. the Butterfly Monk. I have to block. That's a given. You have to block, okay? okay. But you don't have to counter. Okay? And if I you don't can, counter, you, you don't, don't get the get life exhausted. back. Well, I'm dead, though. So oh, yeah, but he's dead. It doesn't matter. That's the thing. Rhino could have been blocking the individual Mist Spirits, but not counter each time. Okay, right. So, yeah, what Benny's saying oh, oh. is against these. You could have jumped in. Oh, and I could, have so- I could have soaked a bunch of damage. I you forgot that you a bunch could of damage. Keep- I forgot that you could keep blocking. Yeah. If you I didn't. forgot that as well, so I will let you do that if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, that I mean that makes sense. That'll save okay. three damage to me. So, so three damage would have actually gone. Right, thank you, Ben. So yeah, three damage would have gone on there. So each time when I attacked with a miss spirit, you blocked, but then didn't counter. Yeah, and then you could keep doing that each time. Soaking up the damage from each of them, and then when the butterfly monk attacks, then at I, this point, then you decide I, to. I eat it. Yeah. Yeah, you counter at that point. Okay, so I think we're good. Thank you very much, Ben. Although, for what it's worth, then you should have attacked with the butterfly monk first. Uh, yes, I should have done, but never mind. <laughs> well, we'll we'll do that. We'll say that's done. Uh, yeah, we're both learning, so we're good. Yeah, I think that is the end of the round. This is tense. Oh. Yeah. So we go to round five, remove exhaustion counters. Two, three. One comes off that, so it's just one off each. Okay. Uh, you draw your remaining three cards and I then did. take two damage. So, uh, yeah, two damage. So you're on, uh, you've taken 14 damage, I believe. Okay, and then I draw, I don't really want that, so I'm going to draw four cards. One, two, three, four. Okay, dice time. Yeah, this round is not going to last a very long time. (laughs) It's going to be over fairly quick, I think. Okay, and your dice. Okay, got a frog. Frog, two leaves, two basic mana. Uh, 
three of them, one of them, and I seem to be missing one of your dice. Oh, there it is. It's in the corner. Another dagger. Right. Okay. Off you go then. See I what will we can do. play an anchor knot. Mm hmm. For one um, no, basic blue mana. Uh, yep. Yeah. And I will use my blue frog dice to knock out one of your uh, spirits. Yeah. Okay, so what does he do? Throw. During your turn, you may place an exhaustion token to deal one damage to a target unit. Oh, okay, yeah, he throws something. Gotcha. Right. Okay, so... I need to get rid of that. And then do this. No, but he's only got one life. So, no, I think I might have this. Yeah, I think if I do my side action first and we use Aradel to use the leaf and ping your anchor knot for two damage. Okay, you get rid of the anchor knot and then you take three damage because of my triple chant of revenge. Ah, uh, yes, which I forgot about. <laughs> Oops. So that dies. You exhaust those three, and I take three damage, and you win. Oh, that... I thought I got you down to one. <laughs> no, that's uh, that's 16 damage. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is that is 16 damage. So, yeah, that was my mistake. I forgot that. Now, forgot if you would have just... A, now, if you would have just attacked me with the two Mist Spirits... Could, yeah. Could, could I have blocked both of them with the Anchor Knot? Oh, no, that's the point. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely making a lot of tactical mistakes here. Yes. So apologies for, for people watching expecting a, a good a good tactical game. You're absolutely right. So Eric won, but what I should have done is you're right. I should have attacked your Phoenix Born with these two. And I can and, only block and you one. could have only blocked one of them. But then what would have happened is I would have dealt one damage to you and killed you. Oh, and you would have done I you still would have taken the three damage. I would have still killed the Ankenaut. And I would have still taken three back. Oh, now, so so what's the order of operations? Or did we? Just I, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll ask Ben. Ben, are you still are you still on the chat? Can you join in now with us? Hey, you're muted. Can you hear me? Okay. We can yeah, hear you. Okay. Can. Yes. Cool. Thank you yeah. for the advice. So yeah, what would have happened here at the end? Is there a timing issue? Uh, there is. Um, that was really exciting, by the way. Really, yeah. really cool. <laughs> I, I thought it was exciting too. This was this was tremendous. Um, so, there, I mean, there are f a few options at a few different points, actually. Like the second um, Eric played down the Anchor Nought, the Anchor Nought could have, as a free action, killed itself, triggered the three chance, and killed Paul straight away. Oh, so wow. One option. Oh, oh to deal one damage to a target unit. It literally. <laughs> yeah. They're not very accurate, or they, they you know, they hurt themselves with the, the big Brilliant. Um, anchor thing. Oh, but, I didn't. I say I didn't read the text that close. I was just going on the spirit of the thing, not yeah. the. Oh. But for where, um, and I, I don't know where the butterfly went. Actually, I got, I must have missed that. Why it oh, that was the end of last turn. The butterfly yeah. ate it. And there was an option, I think, for Paul if he'd wanted to heal a life, he could have meditated away all his butterfly monk spells, killing the butterfly monk and healing manually that way. So oh, okay. That was option he had to heal yeah. life that would have made a difference. Um, and then, yeah, just with the the attack situation, when you have multiple miss spirits attacking and one anchor not blocking. Um, you attack each of your misspirits is attacking the anchor knot blocks one mm -hmm. when that anchor knot dies the chance will trigger but as the attacker what you're allowed to do is choose which of your attackers you resolve first right. and in which order so you could actually resolve the two individual unblocked misspirits or whatever yeah first that that would kill right so okay. the attack the attacker takes precedent and he would have attacked my uh phoenix born first that yeah. That's yeah. the play. All yeah. right, so that yeah, that explains the timing. Exciting play at the end. But yeah, yeah, Paul, look at how many things we missed. We did. It's it's nice having an expert. I need it I is. need an expert on Skype whenever I play. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ben's, Ben's services really Ben's services are available. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I'm really glad that you said that this game was exciting and tense because I think almost every single game I've played of Ashes has been exciting and tense, and this is one of the reasons why i love it i love the fact that it's a wizard's dueling card game and i like that 
Yeah, um, I'm, I'm the, in, that's right in my wheelhouse, those types of games yeah. in general. And Plaid Hat, just kudos to them. They do a great job with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, very, very simple. How many games, like any kind of card game, allow you to choose your starting five cards? None of them. And this doesn't. No. And it, it's, just, it's just brilliant. The gameplay, I think, is fantastic. The tactical decisions that you have to make uh, in this game about, you know, where to attack, when to block, when to do this, and the way that the decks work all of the phoenix born work in a very different way they're all really oh, yeah, cool yeah you could tell yours was doing stuff that mine wasn't doing at yeah. all and, and vice versa yeah so there you go and yeah this was this was just you know, the tip of the iceberg but if you are thinking as i said at the start if you are thinking that you need to get into the game buy all the expansions and go into deck building you do not have to you can just play the game with the six characters yeah that no come with i the don't set. i don't feel like even playing that like like i've run out of things to do with this yeah. deck. Yeah. You know, I could play this deck probably five more times and find all sorts of things that I missed with it. Yeah. There's definite combos in there uh, with the way that the ceremonial magic power die can bring other characters back. Yeah, I, I didn't like touch that. on on that that aspect really at other than the one card that used that, the uh, which, yeah. which killed you uh, in, in its defense. But I didn't, that was the only one of that side i was really using the leaf magic side much more yeah yeah cool right now just before ben goes we have been playing today with the rules of the game that were printed in the actual rule book but there is a thing that has been going around and i almost use the rule today but for the first game against you i used the rules that are in there and i think okay. for these two decks against each other the rules that are in the rule book are fine however okay there is the community has has created something called the raven like rules an errata kind of ben do you want to just briefly explain what the raven rules are sure um when ashes was first uh, created there were lots of really good ideas and good intentions behind the game um, and one of them was in the way the game was being templated and the rules were being structured it was trying to like hold to certain very very good principles unfortunately i think in that process they, they end up twisting themselves around a bit and when you play the the base game as you have been, um, you actually, in most cases, it's fine, but there are a few kind of edge cases that start to come up when you say, mm -hmm. well, actually, how does this work? And in some of these edge cases, it actually works very counterintuitively and a lot of right. players have had issues with that. What Raven Rules tries to do is basically keep the game pretty much as it is, but in these sort of key places where either things are very uh, unclear, undefined, or even working counterintuitively, which is not something you want ideally in the game. Yeah. You want to try and keep things working as people would expect in a lot of cases um raven rules just tries to preserve that so yeah. it, it's, it's basically a slightly tidied up rule system um which tries to make you know the the, the slightly fuzzy bits a little bit more clear yeah um, has has isaac vega commented on on these raven rules just out of uh, curiosity I don't know explicitly but i i think he's pretty much aware of everything that the the community project is doing and i think he's been very positive about it um but i mean they, these raven rules are kind of sort of work in progress a lot of effort has been done i think by the the chap on the channel who's been using yep. the, the handle ashes live i think he's been doing most of the works so we actually have the the creator of raven rules to hand interestingly yeah so when I, when I first got told about these Raven rules, I was like, oh, wait a minute, I don't want to be playing a game with any house rules. But then the more I looked into it, and I actually spoke to Plaid Hat during the week, and I said, what about these Raven rules then? So I actually reached out to Plaid Hat, and they discussed it, and they said they've spoken to the rules experts, and they said, yeah, they, you know, if, if, they, if I want to do the video using the Raven rules, they, they fully approve that. And they agree that the Raven rules are, like what Ben was saying, is it actually fixes some of the counterintuitive parts of the game that occur in the edge cases uh, and it's more in spirit with what the game should have been so you know whilst not official um this is something that i'm sure if i'm going to start playing this more the raven rules are what i'm going to be using uh, would you recommend ben that i move over to the raven rules yeah absolutely okay but like you said with these two basic decks in this game not much if anything would have changed here yeah that's right yeah okay cool right so thank you very much to everybody for watching uh whether you were watching live in the chat and keeping us all company uh, that was great and yeah thank you very much if you're watching this afterwards i hope you found it useful as i say the intention of this video was 
yeah, if you wanted to know what Ashes was, or if you wanted to see how it's played and the number of tactical mistakes made at the end of a game, <laughs> then that's exactly what we did. Oh, but I could have done that. Oh, but you would. Oh, no, but that. And I forgot. But oh, yeah, there's a lot going on. <laughs> Um, and also, I, I, I wanted to get across that, yeah, you, you can play this game just by buying the core set. And yeah, you'll have a lot of fun with it if you like this kind of game. So yeah, thank you very much, Eric, for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you, Ben, for, for, for your insight. And thanks for everyone in the chat for hanging out with us. This was a ton of fun. Yeah, and I'm glad we did this. We've been, we've been talking about doing this for a long time. One final question before you go, Eric. Sure. Was this what you were expecting, or how you know, different was it? I it, it was mostly what I was expecting. Okay. In, in the sense that I like I know Plat Hat, I know the, how they do dueling games. I knew it was going to be extremely well play tested and and balanced. I, I didn't you know suspect for a minute it would be like you know off. But the one thing I I, I guess I always assumed because it had dice in it that the dice would factor in more. I, right. I, I don't I, no, I mean the die the dice factor in plenty, but I mean the luck of the dice. Yeah. Even though you kept not rolling the good dice for me, mm -hmm. I never felt like, oh, well there goes my turn. You know. Yeah. It it, it, ca it caused me to burn some cards, but I was always yes. able yeah. to do what I wanted to do. And that that's to me was key. Yeah. that you could always get and a, a lot of the cards most of the cards had great flexibility in how you could summon them mm -hmm. you know or it was mostly basic stuff and oh, i just need one leaf or i just need one knife or yeah you know okay i need one wolf and but oh, okay i could i can meditate and get that no problem that's the thing and the first time i played the game after reading the rules i kind of skimmed over the meditate rules and i didn't realize the importance of them so oh yeah very much huge. it was oh i've got this card i can't play it Whereas if you just, oh, just meditate, because, you know, at the start of the game, losing a couple of cards from your deck eh, is not that much of a problem for you to get the exact dice that you need. So. And the fact that you could meditate and switch as many dice as you want. Yes. Is all, it's not just like, okay, I got to meditate one turn, meditate another turn, meditate yeah. a third. It was just, all right, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to toss three cards and now I have all the Boom. frogs I need. Yeah. Boom. And when you look at some of the other decks, just touching on some of the other cards, uh, you'll notice some some common things. So, for example, summoning a creature, the cards that you had for summoning your Iron Rhino, and all of my summon cards here, okay, they were all main actions to use. And because attacking is a main action, that means that you cannot summon a creature and attack with it on the same turn, okay? Yeah, like summoning sickness. Yeah. One of the decks, Oh, it one of their it summon cards is a side action. Oh, that's exciting. So just just be aware that, you know, when you you get used to all of these cards working in the same, you look at it and you're like, oh, wait a minute, that's a side action to summon a creature. And yeah, you summon the creature and so, then you so can that's, make So that's the, the rush deck. Yeah, yeah. So just be aware that the other decks do mix things up a bit in the way that they play. Right. That's right. And also there's, how many sets of dice are there? We used three. We both had blue dice. I had black dice and purple dice, but there's also pink dice that a, there is yes much at all so yeah so there's there's another one uh, as well um yeah and and the six core characters that come with the game use five dice uh, of one color and five dice of another color i have actually played this game three player once because it is two to four players and i actually played the game three player once because i'm always nervous about games like this working at more than two players and some of them just don't and the three player game of this i've only played it once was brilliant it just worked huh. really well um because you you could not have two people teaming up on somebody else it just it just didn't work like that so yeah it's cool anyway right we're all done so yeah thank you very much eric thank you very much ben Can I uh, say one quick thing just before the end yeah go on yeah it's just to mention um since the uh the Plata games formally dropped ashes yeah uh, community has been doing quite a lot to sort of keep it going developing it in different ways um and there's ashes.live which is a very very useful website holding a lot of information around what the community is doing right okay uh, so yeah just if people are interested ashes.live is ashes.live on that website there yeah it's all there cool right well, i've got to go and go do some do some gardening believe it or not because the the hedge has fallen down in the back garden so i'm going to go and do that <laughs> <laughs> um yeah enjoy the rest of your weekend everybody um and i'll see you later on thanks all thanks bye bye
Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppers LLC.